everyone, welcome to Sports First TV. We're doing a special interview today. As most of you will know, local elections 2016 candidates have begun their campaign. We are privileged to have one of our treasured Sports First family members, Ila Kumar. Thank you. Ila is a current member of the local Pukitapapa board. Her background is health and fitness. She is also very passionate about the local community and has given back and continues to give back to the com community in so many different ways. Welcome Ila and thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you. Ila, firstly tell us a little bit about yourself and your family. So I'm a mother of three children with a very supportive husband and um, I'm into sports a lot of course and into community a lot, into health and fitness of course. So I've been doing that for nearly 30 years now and find um, that I'm very passionate about it and making sure the community get a lot out of me back for them as well. Okay. Ila, how did your journey begin with health, fitness and community work? So health and fitness has been really funny. I think uh, my sister actually got me into that. And many, many years ago in 2000, oh, it could be probably in the 90s, 90s, 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. there was Jazzercise and Jazzergelics mm -hmm. out in Victoria Street. And she wanted a buddy to go with her. And I didn't drive, <laughs> so I went along with her and I thought, wow, this is going to be great, I enjoy it. From there, I never looked back. That got me into the health and fitness industry because I actually started to crave doing these classes. And uh, being an Indian, it was slightly different on what we can do and what we can't do. Mm -hmm. And that time, there was something I could do. Yeah. So I got out there, did this, and from there, took next step, next step, became an instructor and so on. In the community, I think that helped me, mm -hmm. being, uh, going into the health and fitness. Mm -hmm. It started to take me out of that little uh, shy bubble. Mm -hmm. And I started to be a person that I can actually speak a little bit more yeah. and be amongst community and speak what I want to say. So I think that played a big role. Oh, that's great. Well, I certainly enjoy your classes. Thank you. <laughs> What inspired you to become part of the Pukitapapa board? It was someone that came to my class actually and they said to me, and this was in 2010, and they said, Ela, why don't you put your hand up for the local body elections? Mm -hmm. And I thought, nah, nah. I was on the, local, I was on the uh, school boards, so I thought, nah, this is something different totally. And she goes, you would be the right person to be part of this. And I went along to a couple of the meetings and had a look and I thought, I do like this. It's about caring for my community. Mm -hmm. It's about not the school looking after 2,000 students maybe, but maybe 60,000 people. But I felt passionate about that. So that's when I thought, okay, yeah, I'm going to put my hand up. But I didn't know where it was going to go. I didn't know if I was going to get elected. But I thought, let me give it a go. Mm -hmm. And here you are. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> the time putting my hand up again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, from a professional point of view, what would be your typical week. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to say a typical day because you're super busy and you do so much. So what would be your typical week? So I wear various hats in the community, of course. Um, so I've got the local board hat that I wear and then I've got a uh, job that I do. I work as well for ProCare Health and that's doing lifestyle coordinating. I actually also do group fitness classes. So I work at gyms and that's become like a hobby. I enjoy that. I'm a mum and a wife and I'm actually a family member as well. So you've got other community people that you have to uh, do things for as well. So my week would be pretty tight in time. A lot of people do say to me that you're a busy person, but I think the busier you, busy you are, the more time you make. And I don't find I'm that busy. Uh, no. My health and fitness world does work around people's full-time jobs. Yes. So I work a lot of after hours, a lot of early mornings, and a lot of weekends. Mm -hmm. And that gives me a bit more time during the weekday then to give more attention to other places that I need to. Yes. Yeah, and your personal runs. And the personal runs. <laughs> That's what I do for my fitness. I run. Yes. What inspires and motivates you to take on challenges on a daily basis? I crave for challenges. Um, I think I learn from um, challenges. I'm not scared to be challenged, and it doesn't mean that I have to be right all the time, and it doesn't mean I have to succeed all the time. Mm -hmm. But it gives me a chance to be able to do that next time around and see if I can get better. So I do crave for them. Mm -hmm. And I think for community through our community too, it's really important that you never be afraid to take any challenges on because it just makes you a stronger person. Yes, yeah. yes, no, definitely. Uh, what has been the highlight in your fitness uh, and community career so far? My highlight in the fitness industry probably be that um, while I was at the University of Auckland, I had a lot of people that came along to my classes at student level. Mm -hmm. And then when I would see them in the next part of their life, when they become a parent or they become someone that's working in the industry and they come back and follow me at maybe my local area mm -hmm. and they come along to my local high school where I was doing night school and they said to me, Ella, 
I was a person that came to your class at university. That's, that's so much to me that they actually find me again and they come along. Some of them have actually become instructors. And what I hear back on the Facebook from them is, you inspired us to become an instructor. Mm -hmm. So for me, out of one person, I may be able to get another four more people doing things. That's amazing for me to do. And I think if I can do that bit more mm -hmm. for a bit more, few more years, we might be able to get a few more people out there doing health and fitness stuff. Oh, that's great. Achieving greatness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spread the love. Yeah. <laughs> can you tell us uh, about a few challenges which you may have faced? How you address them? Yeah, some of the challenges I faced in local boards. Um, I'd say this time around, I was lucky. In two, uh, let's go through the lucky part first. Mm. In 2010, when I first got elected, I was so lucky that the board we had was very community orientated, and I loved it. I learnt a lot, and I think I got, was given the opportunity to be very empowered. The chair at that time was a, a very balanced community chair, Richard Barter, mm -hmm. and I think he gave us a great uh, feeling of share of work and share of recognition mm -hmm. and share of empowerment, which was amazing to be part of. And it didn't matter who you were, it was about sharing. Mm -hmm. This time I've come across few challenges, we've been the minority this time around, and we've had to face a lot of trying to get what we wanted for our community from what we heard from the community and try to win for them. It's been difficult mm -hmm. and I think that's some of the challenges I face. And this time around, I must say, it's been more of a political uh, board, which I've learned from that as well. Mm -hmm. So you learn from different boards of different ways that they are. And I, I love the community way the boards ran rather than the political one because community-based local boards, that's what community's about and that's what boards should be about. Mm -hmm. But I managed to soldier on. I think the main thing is you do your best for the community, you face that challenge and you try your best to get what the community wants out of it and help them along and if they can't, what are the other ways that the community can continue to get the outcome? Yeah. I've, I've been to one of the meetings <laughs> and uh, from, a, from a member out in the yeah. community, it's, it is challenging yeah. sitting there in the audience yeah. and listening to everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. well done on the patience. Thank you. <laughs> You've had all this time. Thank you. And lastly, uh, have you got any advice for the community regarding how to vote uh, and why it is crucial to vote for their local elections this year? Very good question. I think we don't get enough people sending back information, voting that they should be voting for. So, how to vote? You're going to get ballot papers and they start from today in your mailbox. Now, you need to remember read the information, tick the people you want to vote for, and post it. Now, if you're going to post it, don't wait till the 8th of October, because, of course, the mail these days, you've got to give it at least a week before it gets to its destination. Mm -hmm. So definitely post early. You can drop it off to the post office. So if you want to do that, hand deliver it, do that. Don't give your post ballots to any, any candidate. Don't give it to them in their hand or their families, because they're not allowed to take them. They're not allowed to handle them. So make sure you get the, um, do them yourself or get people that you know in your families to maybe help you out and get to the places. It is important to vote, but it's your voice. This is one way you get to choose who's going to stand for you and who's going to be talking for you, who's going to make decisions for you and who's going to advocate for you. And at the end of the day, you need to have someone up there that you can actually give a call anytime you want to and also pass uh, words on that you want to as well. So it's important to vote. I think um, one thing I must say, all these years that I've been in New Zealand, and that's, I'm talking about 1960s, my fa father and they came, mm -hmm. and then of course we've been here for since the 1968s, 70s. If I can say one thing, is people should not take voting for granted and think they're not making a change, they're not doing what I want, let's leave it. I think have your voice, and you've made a change already. Definitely. You'll be the change. <laughs> no, that's great advice, thank you, Ella. Um, that, that's us really. Thank you for spending time with us today. Thanks. You are truly an inspiration for me, definitely Thank at you. a personal level that I've known you. And you have a great family that backs Thank you. you. Um, Thank you very much. So, yeah, really appreciate your time today. Thank and you. all the best for Thank the elections. You. Thank <laughs> you very much. Oh, Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, community. <laughs>